All right, my little wigglers, it is Tigger again. I got another video for you about the worm farming business. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about there's a few different ways to make money in this business, okay? Um, the two main ones are selling castings that worms make, and the other one is making worms uh, for sale, all right? And today I wanted to talk to you guys about how we do it at Tigger's Wigglers in terms of making the most worms the healthiest worms in the shortest amount of time. And you know, the best way to learn anything is by making mistakes. And let me tell you guys, I have made more mistakes about worm reproduction than any other aspect of this business. I have banged my head off the wall more times than I can tell you. And I think if you just pay attention for the next couple minutes, you're probably gonna be able to save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of frustration. So first things first, and this took me a long time to figure out, here at Tigger's Wigglers, we use these black concrete uh, mixing trays for our worm containers when we're doing reproduction for worms. And uh, when we started off, we were not this smart. I used to get clear bins from the dollar store that were kind of like thin, chintzy plastic, and we were using these clear bins to try to do our reproduction. It did not work at all. Number one, those bins cracked. You know, we, we've got to take these bins and we fill them up with, with some fairly heavy stuff. And we're putting them on the shelf and off the shelf and we're working with them all the time. And so when you got chintzy uh, clear plastic bins, they're gonna crack, they're gonna break, and you're wasting a bunch of money because you gotta buy a new bin and you make a big mess, etc. So these black concrete mixing trays are super durable and you can use them over and over and over again and they can handle the weight of your medium and also your worms and they're not gonna break. The other thing is that they're obviously opaque, okay? And that is a big plus for the worms. The worms don't like light. So when you're using a clear plastic bin, the worms are gonna be really reluctant to be anywhere except the exact center of the bin and that's not healthy for the worms. So using a black, concrete mixing tray is the best way to go. So we start with that. Okay, now the next thing we need to talk about with these reproduction bins is what sort of a medium we're gonna use. And again, I made a lot of mistakes with this. When I started off doing reproduction bins, I was using shredded paper, cardboard. Uh, I used to put my food scraps in here. Um, then I switched to using compost that we were making outside and uh, truth be told the best thing to use for reproductive bins is peat moss hands down all right and there's there's a few reasons for it number one the worms like it uh, they do very well in peat moss but the other thing is that when it comes time to harvest your worms and you're trying to get the worms out of your medium the peat moss is by far and away the best thing to use because you can use a sifter that the peat moss will just sift through, um, leaving you with your worms. Uh, you can't really do that with compost. If you try to use a sifter with compost, you're, you're not really gonna be able to separate the worms from the compost. Uh, when we were using uh, shredded paper and cardboard, Honestly, the worms didn't like it at all. You know, you can use shredded paper and cardboard in your compost, but it's really not something that I would recommend using uh, pre-compost. Like we throw shredded paper into a compost pile and we let it sort of, you know, ferment in there and let the biology uh, eat the paper up before we give it to our worms. I don't really recommend using shredded cardboard or shredded paper in a reproduction bin. The worms just do not like it. Um, okay, so what I have here is dry peat moss. This is obviously not gonna work. You can't use dry peat moss with worms because the worms need moisture. So what I have here is some reverse osmosis purified water. Uh, I added a little bit of vitamin C to this just to make sure uh, that the water doesn't have any chlorine left in it but you know, reverse osmosis in and of itself should be good enough. The other thing that I have here is a, uh, a wetting agent. <laughs> and you know, 
this is a pretty handy trick. I do not recommend using too much of this stuff because, you know, anything that smells a little bit chemically, you know, you probably don't want to be using too much of it with your worms. But just a dash of this wetting agent, man, it goes a long way. And it helps enormously with uh, working the water through the peat moss. So you, you've got to get this peat moss completely saturated. And in order to do that, it's about, mm, I would say one part water to one part peat moss. So I've got about mm, probably two or three gallons of peat moss here. And so I'm going to add about two or three gallons of water with my wetting agent. And what the, what the wetting agent does is it just distributes the water through the peat moss. So you don't have to work it as much. Um, making peat moss is an enormous pain in the butt. You've got to sit here and work it through with your hands for quite some time. We, we usually use a bigger container and try to make our peat moss all at once. But the long and the short of it is that I'm going to be sitting here for about 10 minutes now and I'm not going to make you watch me the whole time. Um, but it's going to take me a good 10 minutes to get my hands through this peat moss and get the water completely absorbed into the peat moss. And it's super important that we do this before we put our worms in because if we put worms into dry peat moss, the worms are gonna dry right out. Peat moss is very absorbent and it will suck the moisture out of our little worms. So you don't wanna be using dry peat moss in a reproductive bin at all. Uh, but the other thing too is that you really got to work it through. So it takes a little bit of labor and that's never a bad thing. Uh, you know, you got to work to earn a living. That's just part of life. And so you're going to be sitting here for a good 10 minutes or so working your way through the peat moss. And you'll know that all the water is absorbed when you don't have standing water at the bottom. And again, you're using about one part peat moss for one part water and you just gotta work it in. So uh, I'm gonna do that for another couple minutes and when I'm done, we will come back. All right, so we've got our peat moss pretty well mixed up here. And the test that you're gonna use to see if you've got enough water is you're gonna take your peat moss and you're gonna squeeze it in your hand. And really what you want is to just have a couple of drops of water uh, come through your fingers. And that's when you're gonna know that your peat moss is at just about the right saturation level. You gotta be careful with peat moss again because um, if it's too dry, it's gonna dry your worms out and that's really not healthy at all. Uh, so you gotta make sure you got enough water and you gotta make sure that you don't have too much water, all right? So again, the squeeze test. You wanna squeeze some peat moss and if you got a few drops coming through your fingers, it's right on. Okay, so the next thing that we gotta do is we've got to put some worm chow in here. Now, I'm going to do another video probably in a week or so about worm chow. Uh, you might want to call it tigger chow, I'm not sure. But worm chow is a bunch of different stuff that we grind up, uh, and it's, it's worm food, and it's perfect worm food. Uh, and all you got to do is sprinkle it on, and then you want to mix it in. So I just have one cup here. One cup of worm chow is enough, and I'm going to mix it in real good. And you don't just want to leave it on top and, uh, and you don't want it all clumped up together because this stuff will actually ferment. Some of the ingredients in it, uh, like the flour and a few other things, will, they'll actually ferment. And so you don't want it all clumped up and you don't just want to leave it on top. You've got to mix it in and you just want to make sure that it's distributed really, really good. And once you got your worm chow in here, your worms are going to have enough nutrition to do what they've got to do in terms of reproducing. I used to put food scraps in here. And, you know, using food scraps is, by and large, a good thing. But for these reproductive bins, <clears throat> if you're trying to get the most worms to reproduce in the shortest amount of time, the worm chow is better than food scraps. You can use, like, a banana peel or something like that. 
to extract the worms out because the worms will tend to kind of cluster around the banana peel and that can make it easier to extract some worms from your bin. But I've got a, a better way of doing that that I'm gonna show you guys in a different video. But in terms of just preparing your bin for your worms, you know, a cup of worm chow, get it real mixed in nice, uh, that should be sufficient. So uh, then we're on to the next. Last thing that we need to do here, and this is the fun part, um, we just gotta add our worms, all right? So for this size bin, I'm gonna add two pounds of worms. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm adding two pounds of worms for a bin like this, you know, that it's kind of a lot of worms. But the reason that we're doing that is we want to have a kind of like a critical mass of worm population so that they have an easy time finding each other and so they're breeding as much as possible. So even though it might seem like two pounds of worms for a bin this size is a lot, um, that's where you're gonna get your most rapid reproduction. You know, that, that sort of um, uh, worm to bin ratio, if you, uh, if, you, if you wanna call it that. So I'm just gonna put my worms in here. I got these out of another bin. I wanna make sure I get them all. And you know you don't have to do too much. You you don't you don't have to even turn the uh, the peat moss over. These worms are going to dive rather quickly into the peat moss. They don't like light, so they're going to run away from the light. So you really don't need to do much more. Uh, the worms are going to just find their way into the peat moss, and they will start eating the worm chow, and they will start reproducing, and you will have a ton of worm babies very soon. I will do another video about how to harvest your worm bins, uh, how to harvest your cocoons and make the most out of these reproductive bins. But I think that that's enough for today. Uh, I would love to answer any questions that somebody might have. If you have any suggestions as to how I could be doing this better, please let me know. Um, I hope everybody is doing well and thank you very much for watching.